It definitely has a uh, European feel to it, part of Boston. I think it's pretty authentic. We have a, a lot of Italian people that make up um, this neighborhood. One of the best Little Italy's in, in the country. My name is Bobby Eustace, and I am the owner of Polcari's Coffee. When Mr. Polcari, he left the, the business to me, uh, I feel like I'm, I'm a museum keeper. Give him the family price, so you're gonna get that too. The shop is still here, it's 87 years going. When people come in here, I think they can see, it's a genuine, authentic, nice feel. And when people walk in, what do they say? I love this store, it's a cute store. Great smells in here, man. You guys got a very nice place. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Orderly disarray. That's what it is. That's that's what that's going to be uh, how I describe this store. When things aren't too perfect, they're beautiful. Thirty-two forty. Please. I've got this 1909 Fisher Price cash register, which is a, it's an old Swedish register. Yeah, these scales behind me are 100 years old, and when the original one broke down. I said, that's the centerpiece. That's me behind the counter. That's my signature pose. So I panicked. And then I thought, right? And then four letters came to me eBay. I searched the model. I found two. I couldn't believe it. Is he helping you? Yes, I am. He is helping me more than helping me. This is uh, my wall of fame. You know, a lot of history here. As you can see, I've got, uh, we're starting off first with our, our founder up top here. See the gentleman standing in front of flowers? That was Anthony Polcari. Anthony Polcari comes over from Italy. He's 20 years old, and he gets a job during the Depression. And he saves money during the Depression. And he opens up his business. It was his dream to go into business. I can't think of anybody who's taught me more about life than, than, than Mr. Polcari. You know, I, I worked 26 years with him, and uh, he was like a, you know, like a second dad to me, and he's a great, uh, a great instructor and a teacher, and he taught me how to act and, and compose myself on this side of the counter as well as out on the other side of the counter. Just a wonderful influence on my life. It's a modern pastry, nice, and some Polcari's coffee. What's better than that? All you need is flowers. Oh, wait a minute, you got them. I learned how to wait on a customer, how to be polite to somebody, how to be firm when it's time to be firm, how not to be firm when it's time not to be firm. Excuse me, do we have a heckler in the audience? <laughs> I love this picture of Ralph. He looks, he looks so cool, and that was one of his uh, many personalities. Right there, he's just letting it go and letting it roll and had a beautiful smile. When I think of Ralph, I think of the uh, infectious uh, personality with charisma. So I had the luxury of uh, hanging around with a guy that, that everyone wanted to hang out with. Just watching him, how he conducted himself, how he gave me orders and how to conduct myself. And Bobby, do that, don't do it like this. He just, all these little things in the shop. I didn't realize it, but he was poising me to be the boss one day. That um, separation of us uh, created a little bit of a, uh, some talks. And he said, uh, Bobby, I want you to know if you stick with me, you're gonna be king someday. And I know what that meant. And it was just a verbal agreement. And he was true on his promise. Maybe he saw uh, you know, a kid that was, um, that loved him to death and, and wanted to um, preserve his legacy and, and carry on his good name in his shop. And I always say his, his spirit floats around in the shop and I drink it occasionally. 
gonna do a sidewalk delivery. How are ya? We're going back in time. Oh, back in time? Yeah. 1983. <laughs> There's Albie with hair. There's me with hair. <laughs> You can put it on the market and sell it to somebody that doesn't really know the neighborhood and the neighborhood doesn't really know them. But uh, the way it happened is just so smooth that you know you couldn't find a better person to leave it to. So yeah, it was, it was a good mix. Have you heard a song? Ralph. I saw me sing at weddings and functions. He thought my appendix was bursting when I was singing. He likes singers like Frank Sinatra, you know, crooners and smooth, and, and I, my guttural uh, style of vocal might have been a little harsh, but he, he liked the fact that I, um, I wasn't, uh, I had the courage to go up there and do it. Yeah, let me say happy birthday to Franco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Way out. Sure. Right. As this is blinding. Oh, Born Capliano. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Franco. Happy birthday to you. Frank Susi, happy birthday. Thanks, Bob. It's my pleasure, bro. All right, I'm going to charge you the right price with Frank Pace. 25 for him. 50 bucks. No, no, no. No, no. <laughs> no, 10 bucks. 10's fine. Yes, yes, I am. Thanks, Bob. I am sure. He'll break my legs. This guy. No, he won't. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Where are you from, sir? Uh, Rhode Island. It's a great story of an immigrant that comes to America that works hard during the Depression and he ma makes some money. His dream is to go into business and he opens up this shop, you know, in 1932. And, you know, here we are. The shop is still here. It's 87 years going. And, and uh, I'd like to make it 100. I think I got 13 years in me. I'll, I may see you tomorrow if you're around. See you, All right. All right? Thank you. Awesome, man.